we can maybe cover some other point is of course evo evo 2018 is going live probably as we speak in mostly where most of the people watching or who be watching us are enjoying it right now have you watched any of evo live mm -mm, i don't i am not familiar with evo live huh that is of course the big fighting game tournament each year held in oh. las vegas Gotcha, yeah, yeah, I should know that one, but I don't. Now I do. I'm uh, well aware now. Rob's installing Evo, folks. There, there's another one for us. <laughs> but, of course, it is every year we get to see Grandmaster play of some of the big-name fighting games from Injustice, Street Fighter. I think Smash is going on right now as we speak. And, yeah, it's a, definitely a crazy time. I don't know what I'm pretty sure Dragon Ball Fighter Z is one of them. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, I'm looking. It looks like it's on sale at some kind of Razer game store for like thirty-two dollars. Again, I want to try these games, but there's just no way in hell I'm spending more than like fifteen, twenty dollars on a fighting game because I have no idea if I'm ever going to play it again after like messing with the tutorial. Yeah, no, fighting games are tough. If like when I was younger, of course, you know you you. It was the arcade thing to do. You'd go to an arcade and play, or if you had a Super Nintendo, like, like that's where I'd play uh, Mortal Kombat, Clay Fighter, Street Fighter. And But yeah, since I don't have anyone who plays those games, I just kind of, you know, don't I have no interest. And I wouldn't play online, I don't think. That oh, seems yeah. messy. Oh, yeah. Uh, for those folks who miss my... Uh triumphant uh, rise to Street Fighter Five. It lasted about an hour before I just got tired of losing at the bottom bracket of the game. I was like, yeah, I, I can't play this anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah, you would think that they would be doing more to making these games accessible. And that could probably be a topic maybe for later or uh, maybe we'll come back to that in another episode, but yeah, like it just seems like it's very hard to get into a lot of these competitive level games these days. Yeah, no, I mean the the ones that have lasted a while. I mean, you're really gonna have to claw your way to the top there. Mm -hmm. It's it's insane, um, and the the vast number of people like you take a popular game and make it into an esport or make it something competitive, and suddenly you've got tens of thousands of people who've been playing this for a very long time and are very good at it. And if you're new, then yeah, you're, you're good luck. Good luck to you. I mean, you basically have to have a mentor and, and, um, there was, uh, an esports podcast I was listening to. Apparently there are people out there and I know that, that this is actually becoming quite popular, but there's someone in the East coast who's, um, created a gym for esports and, uh, already has like parents bringing their kids there. <laughs> So, I know there's, like, Fortnite coaches all around now and that kind of stuff. It's, it's strange. That's what's been uh, the discussion on stream these last few days. Like, $20 an hour to be a Fortnite tutor. I don't know. I think I missed my calling there, Rob. <laughs> yeah. Well, you can always jump right back into it. You At the end of when you do your, your library thing, well, if anyone out there wants to learn Darkest Dungeon, I'm your man. Uh, that could work. I'm sure all the kids are uh, really wanting to learn to help play <laughs> Well, you can also do cu Cuphead. You're like, I was a record holder, former world record holder mm -hmm. of Cuphead. How much is a co coach? Let's see. A good uh, one? Uh, let's see. Oh, Hello? God, they have their own website right now. Oh, are you there? Yeah, that was uh, Daniel. Uh, Hello, Daniel. Oh. I should have put the name at the end of that. Oh. <laughs> it's very vague. Hello. Oh, they're according to a report, it's $35 an hour for Fortnite coaches. Oh. Yeah, well, I hope I really come on. <laughs> it's a good side income in college, I guess. Mm -hmm. What is the goal there? Like, what is the goal? Um, like, I know having a coach in you know sport growing up, yeah, get better at baseball, tennis, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, you know, practice your swing in golf. Not that I ever golfed in my entire life. I golfed with what giant windmills and mm -hmm. and things you shoot. You know, whatever mini golf. That's what I'm getting at. But like. Um, for Fortnite, what is the goal there to becoming better? What is, I mean, are they are they just waiting for the league to come out? Um, are they hoping to get in tournaments and win money? Because um, I don't see what the goal is with getting good at Fortnite there. It makes no sense to me. I have no idea. And I think what's very interesting is that we still really don't know what the legs 
Oh, there we go, Alberto. Perfect. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that's a, a rich area to go for. <laughs> but, like, we've talked about this before with, like, esports viability, but I, I just don't know what uh, Battle Royale is really going to do. Again, there's a difference between Battle Royale and Fortnite. Yeah, and, and, and uh, like I've mentioned before, I don't even know if I mentioned it here necessarily. Um, hi, Jumpman. Uh, but what happens when, if and when Ninja decides to go to another game? Yeah. Does oh, yeah. does Fortnite die? Like, what happens? I'm looking. For, I'm I'm interested to see what happens there because he's kind of the guy right now. Mm-hmm. Incidentally, he's also the highest paid uh, Twitch streamer right now, too. Yeah, that makes that makes total sense. I know he had like. Um, his Twitter followers and, and basically his social media presence outweighed that of like LeBron James and I mm-hmm. wish I could remember the soccer player's name. I want to say Messi, but I don't know if it was him. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think he makes right now a month, according to a news report? Oh, jeez. Um, let's see. If he's the highest paid Twitch streamer, I'm going to go with I want to say six figures. Is it six figures a month? Yeah. Oh, what, where in the six-figure range is it? It is at 500000 a month he's making right now. Jeez. And my heart is hurting. Wow. There. Six million dollars a year. Mm. I can do math. <laughs> that is insane. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And that's why they're making <laughs> Fortnite uh, tutoring. Do you think Fortnite is like... Um, uh, yeah, I know that we allow people to stream for free, but could you give us some of that money, Ninja? Mm-hmm. That would be really great. <laughs> oh, man. I still can't... Again, we just never know what game is going to blow up. Like, it does seem like Fortnite's the next Minecraft, at least in terms of, like, that pop culture explosion of what we've been seeing. But... Again, I just don't know what the what legs it has in terms of long term viability. I mean, we are up to I think what like season five or six of Fortnite right now, but like what exactly has changed from season to season? And of course, Rob and I are expert Fortnite players. We've been playing it oh, yeah. every day for the last six months. But it's what have we changed? Now. Yeah, it's boring to me now. Uh, well, I mean, you mentioned Minecraft. Now, the one thing I see about Minecraft is it doesn't pretend to be... I mean, it kind of pretends to be a game, but it really is just a building tool, and that's how everyone approaches it. I always call it the modern Legos. It's like my niece loves Minecraft. She's always showing me stuff whenever she has her little iPad and I'm in the room. But, like, um, yeah, it's like it, it's like Legos now. Fortnite, I know that there's a lot of creative uh, aspects to it. I mean, there's... Um, problem solving there's structure building there's you know coming up with creative ways to trap people and and kill them and of course there's the dancing part whatever but and i'm missing and i'm glossing over a lot because my fortnite knowledge uh, is obviously um amazing no it's terrible like i haven't even actually played fortnite i watch videos and that's about it so i don't know what the i really don't know what the staying power is like you say i don't know what you can do in it what it's what it's capability is or it's even entertainment value when it comes down to it i see it as a game as a battle royale game but obviously there's more to it and i don't know what that is yeah and again as we've talked about before it's going to take a lot in terms of constant support to keep people entertained when it comes to these kinds of games now of course what's going to be very interesting is what's going to be happening at by the end of this year because as you know, of course, the AAA mark is going to be putting out their big name multiplayer game soon. Of course, we have a uh, new Battlefield coming, Call of Duty, even stuff like Madden is going to be getting a release soon. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, NBA 2K19 is coming out soon. Yeah. Of course, all the sports games. So it's going to be very... I think this is going to be where we're going to see some very interesting discussions as to... Is Fortnite going to be taking a chunk of that profit? Is it going to eat into Call of Duty or NBA or Madden or stuff like that? I know it's one of those where um, it's in addition to. 
because mm-hmm. there's none of those communities uh, have like none of those communities have players that only play Madden or mm-hmm. only play NBA. It's it's that, and then they'll fill their time up with Fortnite or they'll fill their time up with whatever other sports game, FIFA. Um, like Fortnite is is kind of bleeding into all those. I just don't know if it's actually going to take away money. Maybe time, maybe play time, but I don't think actual funds necessarily. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the same goes when we see uh, esports like fighting game experts. They'll be in like two or three different game tournaments. Like I'm pretty yeah. sure some of the big guys who play Street Fighter, they obviously play. Then they play Mortal Kombat, or they may play uh, Dragon Ball Fighter Z, or stuff like that. Yeah, and then there's esports where you basically have to dedicate yourself. Like, um, mm-hmm. certainly Call of Duty, if you want to get to elite status of like Call of Duty or League or or, or Dota, I mean, you, you that's your that's that's your day. That's 20 mm-hmm. hours a day worth of work um, if you can swing it. Mm-hmm. And, and like we said, there's a huge difference between uh, playing these games casual, or even playing them at like a moderate level, versus biting that bullet and going all in Grandmaster Diamond League whatever the heck you want to call it play yeah yeah it's it's it does it gets a little crazy um but I mean it's not really that crazy when you think about it like I know uh, in talking to people about esports in general like you hear okay well those those they're they're kids they're so young and I just think well I mean LeBron James came out of high school to play in the NBA mm-hmm. like I mean, the parallels are, are, are there. You can't look at someone and say, oh, they're too young to play in whatever league. I mean, you have mm-hmm. Olympic athletes that are 12, for God's sakes. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it, so the parallels are too close. It's hard to say, like, uh, you know, spend too much time in a, an eSport. Well, you're spending that much time to, to practice for any sport. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, I don't, I, I'm starting to not like it when that point is brought up because I'm, because it just means like, well, you're just comparing apples to apples, and you don't even know it. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah. Hi, Elvin. Yeah, and it's what we talked about before with game addiction, or the idea of video game addiction. That people who say that all video games are evil, it's the same thing as the, but it's okay to sit in front of your TV and watch it for eight hours a day. Or people mm-hmm. who go every weekend, you know, hiking or adrenaline junkies, or people who drink a lot or whatever, like. Any activity can be addictive, but and in that same vein, like playing video games at that esports level is very much akin to being in a sport. Mm-hmm. And I know there's a lot of discussion. I remember looking this up a while ago that there are arguments about, like, there's a lot of people who look down at racing or any kind of vehicular uh, sport as to whether or not that's a real sport as well because it's the car that's dry you know the car is going around this course the driver is just in there manipulating the car but again it takes a lot to be a professional racer just as it takes a lot to play these uh, games at the grandmaster level yeah yeah it's it's all i mean it really is at a certain level i mean you can say and I, of course, I've said, uh, not necessarily about racing, but about, like, golf and stuff. It's like, oh, where's the sport in that? You're just swinging a club. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's a, a lot of skill that goes into this stuff. And mm-hmm. um, and that's the, the same thing that, that uh, in the NBA 2K community, because, uh, I mean, I so for people who don't know, I, I one of the projects I work on is the NBA 2K League. Um you get a lot of haters and certainly haters exist in games and the internet in general but where you get to like dota or league or something like that or smash brothers the community is very supportive in this sports game as well as i think madden the community is not supportive yet it is like you you get people who just come on and and most of them just i could do that i'm better than those guys and you know certainly you're probably very good uh, when you're at home alone or even when you're playing with your friends online but when you re- reach that elite stage um, that support level is there most of the time not, it's not uh, it's not there in the sports games I feel like those are the ones that mm-hmm. have to grow up oddly enough uh, even though they're based on reality <laughs> well uh, remember we talked about uh, did you watch the last E3 uh, presentation that they just had a few months ago Oh no! Mm-hmm. Well, they had the uh, grandmaster player of Madden on, and they showed him just like 
he kind of looks like a punk. Like, he came on the stage with, like, a cut jeans. And he took off from his uh, college grad or his high school graduation, whatever, to play Madden. And they were trying to make some small talk with a big-name football player. And that's where he got the new EA motto. Where the guy goes, yeah, we're all out there chasing that money. So from now on, that's when we describe EA. We say chasing that money. But Yeah. And that's one thing that I think that uh, esports leagues are, and they are for for sure. And the NBA two K league, in very particular, because it comes from the NBA, is training these athletes to be people. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Instead of uh, maintain their online personas in in the NBA two K league, they got rid of a lot of people who who were just you know mm-hmm. jerks online, trying to find a you know a friendly term for it, but. Um, the hate is so strong out there that you really do. You have to work hard to to groom these uh, communities to being like adult, you know, yeah. mature. Um, yeah, and I've, that's definitely. And we've somehow. I think this has probably become our first topic. Then talking about <laughs> esports and stuff like that. But yeah, it's kind of that weird issue because again, for a lot of the video game side of things, I mean. Stuff like the fighting game community has been infamous for levels of toxicity. A uh, few people have been banned or been really called out for saying things against women, against other people. It's gone, you know, there, of course, League of Legends, Dota, there have been issues there. Mm-hmm. But it is definitely a different thing when we talk about trying to legitimize this stuff, especially in the mainstream. I know for, like, when they show tournaments, like, on E-League, like, on TBS or whatever, that, you know, they will not tolerate any kind of poor sportsman behavior there. They will take you off, you will be banned or fined, you know, the second you say anything along those lines. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep, I know, Dracon, yeah. Again, like with the fighting game community, they didn't come from like any kind of corporate background. It began with literally people, you know, wanting to host tournaments. I think it was the Battle for the Bay or Battle of the Bay back in the nineties, and then that evolved into Evo. Like they are very much, you know, the anti corporate community. Like, you know, they'll play the games but they'll they still want complete control. Yeah, and this is a weird other parallel with real sports, right? Yeah. Um like the whole you're a bum like that like in baseball and in boxing yeah he's just a bum he, he can't do anything he's the worst boxer the worst baseball player uh, and you know you got uh, fans being horrible to one another just worldwide uh, you know soccer is pretty infamous for that but I know that there have been uh, um, between the Dodger the uh, LA Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants fans like horrible violence outbursts between them so to Again, you can the the community is toxic and needs uh, you know to mature a little bit, but this thing is not you know unique mm-hmm. to, to the esports communities. You're forgetting, Rob. I live on the East Coast. I'm That's in the true. Eagles territory. <laughs> there you go. Yep. When the Eagles won the Super Bowl, basically uh, Pennsylvania shut down for a day due to uh, all manner of craziness. Yeah. Oh gosh. So <laughs> people get passionate is a good word. Uh, it's too good for the to describe some of the actions, but yeah. It, I mean, it's just it's just everywhere, and um, it's just online. It's so much easier. It's so much easier to do. Oh yeah. And it's always been that very much a push and pull. Because do you ring in your fans, but then are you going to piss them off and they won't? play your game anymore or watch it because there's always been that fear for a lot of the major places and why it's been tough to get them to agree on cutting down or going after people I think Leo Legends was kind of like the first one to famously say that if you are a professional player and you are you know caught of poor sports and behavior we're banning you like we don't care how much money you make for yourself or make for us if you're hurting our brand you know, yeah. get the hell out. Yeah, if you're at that level, you represent that game, and you're you're doing so like without being a hired person, mm-hmm. and, and um, you know by that company. So, so like if you start disrespecting them on a huge stage, 
Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I support it. Like, you want to keep your game from being the cause of hatred and mm -hmm. animosity. Yeah. And yeah, but as King is just pouring out, there's also that whole argument over, you know, what games are considered esports? You know, what's the one we should be playing? And this goes back to what you were saying earlier with stuff like Fortnite and Battle Royale, that all it takes is for one great example, one example to push it further, mm. and then what happens to that previous game? Again, yeah. with stuff like... PUBG who? Mm-hmm, or H1Z1, King of the right. Hill, the Colon 2 kind of came out and then disappeared in the matter of a week, yeah. and stuff like that. But, again... Like it's very hard to support these games. I know we brought this up a while ago. I don't know if we ever dedicated a full cast to it, but the idea that it is very much you're chasing the trends when it comes to esports. Now, stuff like League of Legends, Dota, CS:GO, they're not going away. They have, you know, firmly instilled themselves. But what about something like Hearthstone, like Gwent, and even stuff like Fortnite? Now, you can say that they are big-name games that are making a lot of money, but it's not the same as saying, I want to become a professional football player. I know that in five to ten years from now, we're still going to have football. There's still going to be a Super Bowl every year. The Eagles are not going away anytime soon. But <laughs> what about Fortnite? Even stuff like StarCraft, too, has to climb popularity. StarCraft is no longer... You know, that monolithic eSport game that it was like 15, 20 years ago. You know, people have moved on. We now have mm -hmm. Call of Duty. We have Smash. We have Evo, CSGO, and so on. But what happens if you base your entire career on a game that could very well not be supported or not be as popular six months to a year from now? Yeah. Um, I mean, looking at Dota, I've, I've been paying attention for the international, the prize pool. Um, and it's like right at last year. It's it, right now. It's it's resting at like one million dollars shy or a half a million dollars shy of last year. And they even have um, uh, like extra prizes if they eclipse last year's or or if they go above thirty million because it's at twenty three something right now. And last year it just got over twenty four, I guess. Um, and so they do. They have incentives for people to increase that prize pool because it's mm -hmm. all community based. But that's a really good determinant of how popular mm -hmm. it is. It's like if it doesn't have as big of a prize pool as last year, is it kind of on the decline now? Um, should we start looking elsewhere for for whatever the mm -hmm. top or one of the top games is? Um, so it's important. And the the League of Legends League now being out there and. Um, Overwatch, it's. I mean, viewership is going to be what drives that. Uh, certainly, mm -hmm. League and, and those are two very hot games. I mean, compared to the one that we just started, the uh, 2K League, which is just diminutive in comparison. Um, it's. It, it. That's. I feel like that's the best metric. Mm hmm. Yep. And speaking about Overwatch, like, I know Blizzard has been doing their damnedest to push that game as a potential esport. It seems to be growing, but again, like how interesting is it compared to something like Fortnite or to Street Fighter? And I think, as you said earlier, like when it comes to like the genre defining esports, they're very much like separate from each other. Like someone who's going to play Call of Duty professionally probably is not going to be playing Dragon Ball Fighter Z, who's right. probably not going to be playing Gwent or Overwatch. Right. So it does raise that question about just how much money there really is for the entirety of esports. And this again right. goes back to what we said with MMOs. That is the was there a market for MMOs or was there a market for World of Warcraft? And the same goes for Fortnite and so on. Yeah, and, and what happens, say Riot starts to see that decline in League of Legends, how long are they going to uh, keep pumping money into it like mm -hmm. you look at the nfl it's it's viewership is declining it's it's on the downward swing um it may come up but you like you say it's not going anywhere it's gonna still be there in five years all the teams are still gonna be there in five years and players are still gonna be making millions mm -hmm. of dollars yep. and it's not like the nfl if something happened to the league they suddenly have something else to shift to uh, Riot could just switch to another game that's starting mm -hmm. to, you know, they can keep putting money into other games if they want. Blizzard, you know, sheesh, how many games could they just 
they mm-hmm. could just make a game that is terrible and and put it out there and everyone's gonna buy it like yep. just they just need to shift their focus like uh, mm-hmm. if if a game starts declining how fast does a game company sw- uh, switch their attention mm-hmm. uh, to making something that's gonna make money in the future yeah and again if they do switch then what happens to all the people who play that game all the people who you know base their professional career on either you know broadcasting it or doing an esports of it, and of course, what happens to all the advertisers? You know, like, oh, well, you donate or you wanted to advertise on Street Fighter, but guess what? We're moving on to the next Street Fighter. So, you know, have fun with that. Well, I'm not worried about the broadcasters or the or the the um, marketing people because, like, you know, you I'm selling. Um, Axe body spray. Well, I can sell that anyway. Yeah. You know, I can sell that at the next esport. It doesn't matter. Insert esport here, and that's where I'm going to sell it. Um, but for a player who is specialized in that one game, it might be a little more difficult. Now, saying that, there are a couple people in the uh, 2K League who are uh, previous like CS:GO pros, um, uh, Counter Strike pros. I can't imagine they were at that top, top, top level. But if they were making mm-hmm. money on it and they switched to another sport, I guess it's possible. I mean, if you've got that those the, those Twitch skills mm-hmm. um, with a controller or with a keyboard and mouse, then I'm sure you can switch over to something else. Um, like, if you're good at Dr- Grim Dawn, you're going to be good at Titan Quest. Uh, you're mm-hmm. probably going to be good at Diablo. You're probably going to be good at, at Torchlight. Um, so those skills will, you know, push around a little bit at the very least. So I'm not too worried about all of them. But yeah, if you're an elite player uh, on one sport um, you're not going to be elite on the next sport you try mm-hmm. yep. and again it gets hard when you're trying to kind of chase whatever that big game is because again we saw this with lawbreakers trying to position as the next big team based FPS and it just did not attract an audience and that's another big point we've talked about this before with developers trying to make their game be the next big esport and again, just like with trying to figure out what game is popular, trying to figure out if your game's going to be pop become that is very hard. I think a lot of people, for instance, discount Dragon Ball Fighter Z. Like I don't think anyone was really expecting it to blow up this much, especially in a year of Street Fighter V, of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, when you have these major franchises who have been out for so long. And yes, of course, Dragon Ball has had a huge franchise. It's had fine games in the past, but never at, I think, this level of intricacy and complexity in terms of its mechanics. Right. No, for sure. It's um, it, it's interesting. It, it is interesting to see what catches and what doesn't. Um, and it, it's also like a, a, a waiting game. It's like, how long can you can you wait till it does catch on? Or or whatnot. I will say that um, I feel fortunate to be a part of the league because it's backed by two giants that aren't going anywhere and yeah. don't have any interest in moving their attention. Mm-hmm. Um, like 2K, uh, NBA 2K, it's it's huge. I mean, it's it's pretty big. Mm-hmm. Um, and the NBA itself is expanding all the time. So they're not worried about uh, an investment like this. Mm-hmm. And so we're going to be around even though our viewership is not that great. Um, but for something like Dragon Ball Z, um, if it hadn't taken off, I mean, certainly that property is not going anywhere. But, you know, the investment in it, it as an eSport is going to dry up. And mm-hmm. certainly you got PUBG, which is kind of like, I don't know where that's at right now. And I'd like actually, I should probably just look that up at some point after the, the cast is to see, mm-hmm. have its numbers declined to the point where it's not even worth uh, worth it. I know they're they're trying mm-hmm. still, but um, yeah, what do you, what happens? What does it just yeah. evaporate entirely, or what? Does yeah. it just go back to the fans? And that's the always that double edged sword about trying to make your game as an esport is the fact that it is entirely community driven at that point. If you don't have people wanting to play your game at that level or wanting to be esports, then there's not going to be anyone to watch, there's not going to be anyone to shoot for. So then the community goes. And it doesn't matter how great your game is, if nobody wants to play it, if nobody's interested in watching your game, it's not going to be an eSport, no matter what happens. It's right. why we probably aren't going to be seeing a... I'm trying to think of something here. I guess like a 
I know, a Stellaris esports league coming out soon, or an XCOM league. That'd be, that'd be, that would be funny. I would, I would love to see that. Yeah, that'd be interesting. And as an interesting point, I just looked up, according to May of this year, Dragon Ball Fighter Z has gone past 2.5 million copies sold. So it most likely has been considered a success. It probably has made back its development. And they are still supporting it with more content and DLC, which I can try and look that up really fast. But, like, here's an interesting point, though. If for those of you who remember, Street Fighter V really occupies a very weird area in terms of professional players and the general consumers. Because when the game was originally released, it was just pretty much, you know, this is for the esports players. If you won't play this for extra stuff, we don't have it yet. And a lot of people still remember that. It still has, I think, either mixed or... Yeah, I think it's mixed reviews right now. Make Super Seducer an eSport. Yeah, that will certainly go over well here. Uh, let's see. So, Dragon Ball Fighter Z. It looks like they're going to be releasing two more characters. Goku and Vegeta. That's the thing about Dragon Ball. That pretty much, like, half your lineup is going to be some variation of Goku and Vegeta. And yes, we are now making fun of the Dragon Ball fans. So let's add that to the list there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to stay out of that. I don't. The only stuff I remember about Jet Dragon Ball is it would come on before one of the shows I'd like to watch on Adult Swim, mm -hmm. and it would just be like, "Is this the same battle that was going on the last two episodes?" <laughs> oh, this good. is the same battle. It's been a four episode battle. What's going on with Dragon Ball Z? If you think that's bad, there's of course Naruto and Bleach as well both having insane filler arcs. Of course, yes, we are now attacking anime, too. Yeah. You got anything bad to say about Call of Duty, Rob, so we can, you know, lump them in as well? It's trash. There we go. Perfect. Yep. It's, that is the one insult I have learned in esports, is that just call someone trash, and that's it. Walk mm -hmm. away. You're trash. Okay, so for Dragon Ball Fire Z, well, they do have additional characters, Bardock and Broly, which, again, for people who don't know Dragon Ball Fighter or know Dragon Ball Z, you probably have no idea what I'm saying right now. I'm so, You know what would be very interesting as a crazy announcement? With the popularity of Johto's Bizarre Adventure here in the United States, now they've been bringing the series over uh, the uh, dub... Wait, is it dub? Yeah, the dub version of it. I wonder if we will see a uh, fighting game based on... Oh, my voice is going out. If we will see a, a, Jodo, a Jodo's fighting game in the United States. But I'm going to have to look out for that one. Mm -hmm. is that not, what, what is that? Where, where would I find that uh, show? It is on Adult Swim right now. Oh, yeah, okay. You're right, Algaro. Did that ever get poured to the United States, or was that uh, Japan only? Because I know there have been several Johto's Bizarre Adventures fighting games. That's not an easy title to say in one sentence. But it definitely hasn't gotten, I think, as big in the United States, at least over the last few years, compared to Dragon Ball. But again, Dragon Ball has been aired since, I think, the 90s. Here, I remember watching it on Toonami back during when they were allowed during the afternoon. And again, you never know. I mean, um, Arc System. Is that their name? Uh, yeah, Arc System Works, the developers of Dragon Ball Fighter. Of course, they got their start making the Blaze Blue series, which in and of itself is a very massive fighting game to play. Uh, let's see. There's too many fighting games. I, mm -hmm. I, I do love the genre, but again, it's just... Uh, it's too much. Mm-hmm. And I guess to begin to wrap things up, let me check our time here. You know, and us for almost 40 minutes. Sheesh. Like, with... <coughs> oh, my voice is really starting to go. With the whole eSport, Evo, and stuff like that, I guess here's one final question. This will be our wrap-up for this section. As we've said, when it comes to these big-name games and these big-name leagues, they have their respective shows. Again, uh, I think... Uh, Starcraft has oh, I forget the name of it what their big league is I know League of Legends has their big show Evo is fighting games and so on do you think we'll see more uh, professional shows develop like, do you think we will see something like 
a um I know. Do you think we will ever see like a CCG, like an actual league, like an Evo version for CCGs? Because I know right now we have major L, we have shows for like Netrunner, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, but they're usually separate events. Do you think we will ever see them try and do these consolidations of these various games into like a major weekend or a major tournament? Yeah, I mean if. With with Overwatch, I mean, Blizzard's got a template that they can move to anything, uh, including Hearthstone. And, you know, when Magic the Gathering, they had... Well, I can't really say much to the tournament structure. Mm-hmm. I mean, it did have some pretty big tournaments uh, that were regular. Mm-hmm. So I can't imagine that a CCG, uh, an electronic or a digital one, wouldn't have the same kind of thing. I'm sure there's already leagues out there but maybe one fully backed by Blizzard will make it official. Um, but that stuff, I mean, that that I don't doubt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and again, like, when it comes to these levels of tournaments, it's all about the fans and just what the level of interest ultimately is. So it's why stuff like CSGO and League of Legends have kind of solidified themselves. Because they were already great games beforehand, and then they began that move towards an eSport or to that e-league. But it's going to be a lot harder for like a brand new game to try and get to that level. Yeah, and leagues and leagues are are really interesting to me. And I've been waiting for them to come out. And then this, this last year, just a slew of them. Mm-hmm. Um, because uh, as like just, just picking Dota as an example, um, you know, you can claw your way just get a team together and it seems like it's very accessible you know from a bystander's point of view to kind of get into you know whatever minor circuit and then kind of get up into the Mm -hmm. thing but once a league starts you can't get into it i mean it's kind of locked down for the course of a season Mm -hmm. and you can't sneak your way in uh in a turn in like a, a dota structure where the the international is like the one and then everything leading up to it is just kind of all over the place and they just put a structure in place that mm-hmm. you could kind of call it a league but you can still sneak in um you might not be able to sneak into the international but you can sneak into some of these other tournaments and possibly even be one of those that that wins a tournament that gets you into yeah. your ticket to the the big one but um that's that's where I'm I'm interested to see like uh, as someone who might be chasing down a professional career as a gamer, um, does my interest level drop when I realize that I've missed my window uh, mm-hmm. to get into the league? That yeah. I don't know. And if Josh was on the other Josh, we need him yeah. on to have this discussion. I'm surprised he's not in chat right now. We need to page him. But yeah, like we, when we when I did my presentation about esports, we talked about this and how like. If you're expecting to play a video game and then, you know, wake up to find an endorsement deal, it's not going to happen. And right. as you just said, like, when we talk about major leagues and stuff like that, it's you are going to have to be playing that game, you know, as a job. That's like 8 to 10 hours a day just so that you're getting notice. Like, it's not like you're going to walk into a place and say, you know, I'm the 5,000th best uh, Street Fighter player. Give me a promotion. No, yeah. you have to be, you know, their, your record is basically your portfolio there. And if you're not able to do it, then you're out. But then, as oh. you said, like, with, like, seasons, like, what about team-based games as well? Like, you know, like, how do you stand out in a game like League of Legends or Dota today? I mean, you just got to claw your way. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I, the advice I've heard from all the different esports, especially team-based ones, is you find a team and you start entering uh, like low level circuits. There's mm-hmm. plenty of low level circuits oh, out yes. there in tournaments. I like little people running them out of their garage, especially like like Smash Brothers. That's kind of how it you know started. I guess that's how most of these started. But you know, you just keep. You have to grind. It's just like you do in the game. You mm-hmm. just have to keep grinding in the IRL version uh, until you get to that that level where you know you mm-hmm. enter a, a tournament and then you're noticed and, and maybe you're recruited by another team and so on and so on and so on up the chain mm-hmm. you know that's just and as a solo that's the one that that confuses me the most because it seems like if you're outside the tight-knit community and trying to get in it's a little harder um yeah. to do in a solo game and yeah, this is one of the things that i do respect about evo and how they sell their tournaments so that anyone can show up as long as you're willing to pay the entry fee and you're going to show up for that 
in Las Vegas, you can compete. You don't That's need awesome. to have a team. You don't need to have a, you know, 95% win record to walk into EVO and play the game. And there have been reports of those underdogs who have made it to, like, finals or at least to, like, the higher stage. And I, I think I do really respect them for doing that. Mm-hmm. Because you don't really see that, again, in the other leagues, like, or in any other eSport. You can't just walk in, you know, the day they have an Overwatch tournament and say, I want to compete in this game. They're not going to let you in. Right. Uh, I guess, oh, here's one final question. This will be our final one for the section, but I think it's a very important one. As we've said, we are seeing more of a push for esports, you know, in the general area like i talk about this with the games for change lady about they're actually having colleges having esports tuitions or esports scholarships the idea behind a fortnite league is or fortnite tutoring is now an actual thing like i guess do you think in like a decade from now that you know the idea of esports will that be something that is you know as you know streamlined or as day-to-day as having you know a minor, you know, minor league football or minor league baseball or stuff like that, like a way of kids starting to play this stuff. Like, do you think someday we'll have a minor league Overwatch? You know, ages five to ten. You know, a league of stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, in a lot of respects, we're already there, but to have like an official yeah. minor league seeding system, a farm system, uh, I think we're almost there. I, I mean, um, with with. Uh, game when you have like an Overwatch League, well, there's other leagues that kind of were there before. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, uh, certainly with League of Legends, there's other there have been other tournaments and structures that are they're already in place. So any one of them could serve as an official minor league if mm-hmm. if Riot so wanted, so deemed it. Um, so you know that stuff's already like the the building blocks are already there. It's just a matter of making them official. Yeah. And when that happens, that's going to be a really interesting change in terms of the legitimacy and the professionalism of esports. Because yeah. if they can start early like that and start cultivating players, I think it will do a lot, again, to curb some of the toxic behavior and some of that negative perception online. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and it really, it's all driven by the money. I mean, mm-hmm. more than anything, when people realize that there's money and these are the stories I hear all the time it's like well um, I'm trying out for this league and my parents I think it's a waste of time and then suddenly they see that paycheck and they're like oh okay I'm on oh, board yeah. now mm-hmm. chasing that money I yep. think that's our chasing that money there you go <laughs> I think that's the final point for this section right there <laughs>